So OCR after 1A, which asks you about Lexis, so the words in a text, will ask you a question on sentence structure in, in the same text. Um, so as I did with, with Lexis, I want to show you how you might approach that with exactly the same text um, using the contextual approach. Okay, you, you can go for the contextual approach or you can go for the more technical approach. It depends which you prefer. Um, so I will record video showing you how you'd answer the same questions on the same text using the more technical approach. In other words, being led by the features you see. But here I want to show you how you might look at it from context. And just to illustrate, I'm taking the same contextual points as I use for the 1A question to carry over into the 1B. I wouldn't advise you to do that in, in the actual exam. Um, you probably want to talk about slightly different things contextually. The reason I'm doing it is to just show you how the same bits of evidence and the same points can be used to talk about the grammar as well as the words. I think people sometimes find it a bit harder to talk about the, the grammar and the sentence structure. So I just wanted to show you how all the same evidence could be carried over um, to do that. So when we talk about the contextual approach, um, this is what we mean, okay? 1B is going to be about sentence structure. It asks you about how the sentence structure operates and how does that meet the context. So what is that about? Well, that's about the way the words are ordered, which covers all sorts of things, and, and they're there. Sentence types, so minor, simple, etc. The functions of those sentences, the particular clauses, particular phrases, the syntax, the order of the words, infinitive, so remember the verbs with have, which have two before them. Um, gerunds, which is verbs used as, as nouns, participles, verbs used as adjectives, that they're all really good to use. Um, when I talk about the contextual approach, what I mean, you start with what the text is doing and why and who it's for, and then you find the evidence to support it. That's not necessarily the best way. It's not the way that everyone will want to do it. Some people would rather start with the features, um, but I want to show you how you do it this way, and then I'll show you how you do it um, using the technical approach so that you can decide which suits you. We'll maybe mix and match um, both. Um, so I'm using exactly the same text as I did in the, the Lexis um, question. I've got all the same contextual features and I'm using all the same evidence. As I said to you, I wouldn't do this necessarily in the exam. I wouldn't repeat all the same contextual points. I wouldn't use all the same evidence again. The reason I'm doing it is just to illustrate how you might look at similar evidence, but focusing more on the sentence structure rather than the words themselves. So. All those things in the orange boxes are valid contextual points. The three that I picked um, last time were those. How, what the text is trying to achieve and what it says there is go beyond one simple purpose. Um, how is the topic or the, or the people in the text represented and why? Um, and how is the audience positioned? What is implied about the audience? And the evidence that I've picked out, I've colour coded, okay? It's all the same stuff as I used in the last video on Lexis, okay? As I said to you, I wouldn't necessarily um, do that in the real exam. I wouldn't necessarily just copy um, all the same evidence and the same contextual features across. I'm just doing it to show how if you go with the contextual approach, you can use the same evidence to adapt. Okay, if this was a real exam, what I'd suggest is you perhaps choose another two, two or three different contextual points to talk about and find the evidence um, for those. But what the contextual uh, way of doing it allows you to do is start with what you find interesting and then adapt um, later on what it is that you actually um, talk about. So what you'd end up with is a text that's colour coded like that. You might have numbered it, okay, but anything in green is about the purpose, anything in blue is about the representation, anything red is about the audience um, positioning. As I say, it's all the same stuff as I picked out in the Lexis video. So for context, um, what would you uh, say? Well, I've, I've picked out um, the same three contextual points as I used in the Lexis video, okay? So the fact that they represent anyone on the left, so Channel 4, the Labour Party, anyone on the political left as kind of childish and patronising is an out of touch. There's the fact that they position the audience to be friendly with Ali Ross and already agree with him, and they suggest the audience are, are sensible people who understand politics, who are probably working class and see through this, this London bubble, as it's described. And there's also this apparent purpose to entertain. On the one hand, Ali Ross writes in quite an entertaining way, but also there's a real big power play here. He empowers the audience, but only if they agree with him. So they're the three contextual factors. As with the last video, what I've done is I've, I've picked out the evidence for two of them, um, and then I'll show you how you would actually write one of them, okay? So the first point, I'm gonna show you evidence and the planning, and then what it might look like in a paragraph. The second one, there's the evidence and planning there, but I'm not gonna show you the paragraph. The third one, there's a the contextual point. So you, if you want to, can go back to this, look at what I've color coded and think, right, what might my paragraph um, be? 
So in terms of the evidence I've picked out, and it's the same evidence as used for left um, for for um, the Lexis question, but I want to think about what you could do with it. Okay, so those channel four lefties. I looked at it in the last video because of the determiner and the noun lefties. Well, we're looking at grammar now. So what could we say about it for grammar? Well, it's a noun phrase. Remember, a noun phrase ends with a noun. It's a group of words that are all based around a noun. Those channel four lefties. It's a noun phrase. So straight away it cheapens um, that channel. Okay, they are defined by being lefties, and, and cha channel four is kind of just a modifier on on lefties. Yeah, the two are kind of linked together. If you're on channel four, you're just a lefty. Um, we also get other noun phrases. We get skewed political agenda. Okay, Channel 4 has a skewed political agenda. Um, Nish Kumar has socialist fantasies. There's a little Channel 4 London bubble. So we get there lots of noun phrases that are all done, and the pre modification in each case mocks the left or Channel 4. So before you get to that last word, before you get to lefty or, or Channel 4, it's already been cheap and it's already been attacked. So we're already geared up to feel negatively about it before it comes in. Um, so I'm looking at it slightly differently. I'm looking at all the same words as we looked at in Lexis, but now I'm looking at the syntax, the word order, and how it's arranged into a phrase and what comes before what. Um, we could look at the, there's an adverbial clause. Catherine Ryan is described as, as, um, as, as goading Stanley Johnson. Now, it's an adverbial clause. It starts with while. Okay, so it works kind of like an adverb of time, really. It describes, you know, when did she do that? Well, it was while she was goading Stanley Johnson. Um, so that suggests that really that was what she was trying to do. She wasn't trying to be funny. She was just trying to get at him. Um, you could also look at goading. Um, it's a progressive aspect verb. Okay, now if you're looking at verbs, if you're looking at why the word was picked, so why, why did they pick goading, you talk about that in Lexis, but if we're looking at the aspect of it, the fact it ends in ing, the fact it's an ing verb, that would go in the sentence structure because that's about how the text is put together. Why is it in progressive aspect? Why didn't they just say she goaded Stanley Johnson? Why did they say, you know, she did this while goading him? So the progressive aspect suggests it kind of carried on throughout the show. We also get heckling as well. Um, the audience is described as heckling. Um, that works as a, as a participle. So Heckling is, is a verb, you know, if you were heckling somebody, but it describes the audience as a heckling audience. Okay, so that's an example of a participle. The verb is used as an adjective. As I said, I've done videos on each of those different aspects of terminology, so if you're unsure about that, you can go back and, and, and watch those. So if I want to develop that, what might I say? Well, all the ideas of the left, all the ideas of Channel 4 are presented as ridiculous, they're fantasies, they're not realistic, but that's alongside this sense that behind those kind of nice, ridiculous ideas, there's a really dark purpose. You know, their ideas are these crazed fantasies, but actually there's something really dark at the heart, and they gold and they heckle, and, and they're nasty people. That's what Ali Ross is trying to develop. So in my paragraph, that's where I might go with it. For the second point, the audience positioning, well, there's the, the point um, Ali Ross writes, it, it, it would have been insufferable or intolerable um, if Labour had got a result. And in, in, in the last um, video, you might talk about got a result, the informality. That's the choice of Lexis. But you can also talk about the um, perfective aspect there. It would have been. He uses perfective aspect, okay? If that had happened, it would have been awful. Um, so he, he gives us this idea that actually, yes, he really enjoyed watching it, but that was only because there was a real sort of threat. It would have been terrible. It was really close to being terrible for him. That makes his glee all the more sort of powerful afterwards. He uses the question about Lewis Goodall. And again, I mentioned that in the last video. The sentence structure you might talk about the fact that it's in parentheses, it's in brackets. It's worded as a question or an interrogative. That's to do with how it's constructed. So you might talk about why well, that question's there. You get participles used. So remember that um, uh, verbs which are used like adjectives. So working class of so working is a verb but here it's what it essentially becomes an adjective there working class and um, we get pre-prepared victim box so again pre-prepared is, is a verb if you prepared something it's an action but in this case it becomes an adjective it's a victim box that has been pre-prepared that's a description of the victim box what it suggests there in both cases is that they have no respect for the working class they've already got them pinned down as, as victims so those participles suggest channel four are kind of taking the audience for a ride they're insulting their intelligence um, and then we get an infinitive. So uh, Shami Chakrabarti says, looked like she'd been ordered to send a son to the local comprehensive. Remember, if it's a verb and it's got two before it, so to send, that's an infinitive. In this case, it works, I think, like an adverb. So she, she looks like she's been ordered 
to send a son that it modifies the order of what she'd been ordered to do to send a son. So it works like an adverb. So you get that infinitive, which implies that the biggest horror to her is having to mix with normal people. Again, it, it presents her as very different to the reader who thinks, oh, you know, get over yourself. Um, there's also that prepositional phrase, to the local comprehensive. So we've got a to, but that's not uh, an infinitive because it doesn't have a verb after it. To the, you know, the isn't a verb. That's a prepositional phrase. tells you where or when something something went. So it, where, where was he ordered to go? To the local comprehensive. Again, it's that idea that um, that she sees herself as totally out of touch with, with normal people. She's horrified at mixing with them. So where do we go with that? Well, the idea that there's a real danger from the left is what Ali Ross suggests, that all these people are horrible people. He contrasts Shami Chakrabarti's horror at doing what you know normal people do with this sense that there's real danger. Um, it would have been intolerable. You know, These people are skewed. They've got an agenda. So he, he, he uh, contrasts what he sees as a real danger of the left with Shami Chakrabarti's thought of danger at the local comprehensive. Um, you know what, what's Ali Ross doing? Well, he's suggesting that he's on a level with us. He, he's one of us. He's saying, you know, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like you. I might have gone to local comprehensive, um, but Channel Four, they're trying to manipulate you. They're trying to patronise you. You don't want to trust them. So that's what he's doing. So if you want to have a go at writing that second paragraph, they're the sorts of things you might put in there. The third paragraph, you can go back, um, rewind the video a bit, and look at the the evidence. Okay, and you could try and construct a, a paragraph about that. So what might this look like in a paragraph in the exam? And, and you want to aim for about, about three of these if you can. So if you're writing on sentence structure, this is how it might go together. So several noun phrases are used to belittle Channel 4 and the political left with careful pre-modification. So I've got the contextual point that the left is being belittled, but we're talking about the noun phrases and the pre-modification. We're not talking about the words. We're talking about how those words are ordered. That's what 1B is all about. So whether from an evaluative adjective in, in Little London Bubble or the participle in Skewed Agenda uh, or the third person determinant in Those Lefties. So I am talking about the words, but I'm talking about the fact that they come before the words that they're modifying. So it's about the syntax. Um, skewed is a participle. Again, if, if, if you've skewed something, it's a verb. It's what you've done. But here it's used like an adjective. It's a skewed agenda. Um, in each case, the syntax means that before we presented with London or the intention of Channel 4 or the left, the reader's already inclined to see it as ridiculous. So that's where it's relevant for 1B. I'm not talking about just the words, I'm talking about how they're ordered, the fact that before we get Channel 4 or the left, we get a word that has distanced them or made them seem ridiculous. Adverbial clauses achieve a similar effect with while goading, Sonny Johnson. And remember, if, if, a, if a clause starts with, with while, it's adverbial because it tells you when it happened. So it's a good little um, kind of hack to find those. Implying this and not comedy was Catherine Wise's intention. And where the bookings confirmed, their usual prejudices, which implies Ross can see through the apparent comedy to a darker purpose of, inc of encouraging goading and heckling uh, with these progressive aspect verbs suggesting they happened all night okay so that's where you might go with this so notice what i'm doing i'm, I'm using in some cases the same evidence to make a very similar contextual point but i'm focusing on the participles or the clauses or the syntax or how they're put together that's how one b is different and as I say, I wouldn't necessarily make the same contextual points. I wouldn't necessarily use the same evidence for 1A and 1B. You don't have to. And in some cases, it's probably better not to. But what I'm showing is how the bits that you just picked out um, at the start, just because they were interesting and just because they seem to be having an effect, the bits that I've underlined there are actually uh, the things that you can look at for 1A and 1B. If you're looking at the words, put it in 1A. If you're looking at how they're ordered, or what happens to them, or what tense, or what voice, or what aspect they're in, or if there's infinitives, then you can put it in uh, 1B.